Good morning, everyone. Today, I would like to share with you the technique of mental detoxification and relaxation, how to control your breathing. Uh, first of all, you have to know uh, the breathing rhythm or breathing exercise. So you learn from the experience. First, realize it with breathing in normal. Inhales and exhales normally, knowing you are breathing. Next, dramatize to see your breathing. Take a deep breath and hold it a little bit. Follow the breath from your nose down to your abdomen, then exhale. Now take a medium breath uh, the, from the nose down to your chest, then exhale. Finally, take the just a short breath. Force the breath quickly in and out just at the nose, just like this. And we know that the three rhythm of the breathing, deep, medium, and shallow. Breathing can also be close and rough, like a snoring, or sometimes excellent and smooth. So try to experimenting Take deep, medium, and short breath. Then make your breathing rough and coarse, or very fine and soft. So emotions are attached to the breathing. Uh, you take a very short, rough breath when you are in a bad mood or get heated up and you almost lost your temper. When you take a short breath, you get less oxygen and feel tired. This is your temper. That kind of breathing makes you very emotional. So knowing your breathing helps control your emotions, work with breathing rhythms, they become a tool for the maintaining your feelings. Someone may have told another, calm down, calm down, take a deep breath. It is, in fact, the technique of control the emotion. The more keep cool and calm, and the more peace and happiness you will attain. When you become hot temper and blow your top, you create more stress and even worse, your feelings not good mood. This completes the significance components of knowing. That I mentioned earlier, um, knowing your sitting position is the first stage of mental detoxification. You have to know your body sitting and adjust how to sit for a long time. And knowing your bodies and relaxing your muscles, mental detoxification, and knowing your breathing rhythms. We shall now discuss two related topics emphasized in Eastern philosophy, knowing the great elements and knowing the impermanence. Knowing the great elements, continue in more details about that. According to Eastern philosophies, knowing yourselves involves knowing the significant elements. The four great elements are earth, water, fire, and wind. 
solid organs, liquids like blood, etc., warmth and breath. These combine to form life or your cells. In India, philosophers add two more great elements, space and consciousness. Space is similarly to the cyberspace in the information technology. It is the medium in which our body exists. There is also space inside our body. The wind is mixed with the blood, flesh, and bones. But the space in between our organs, consciousness comes with mindfulness. When we become mindful, consciousness is the result of our knowing. To know yourselves thoroughly, things of the four or six great elements, know how they work together. Then, when we talk about suffering, impermanence, and non-cells, you will realize that all these are interrelated. When you are in a good mood and are enthusiastic to do something, it means that you have good functionings between body and mind and proper proportion among elements. So next, knowing impermanence. This is very important if you understand or you realize about the, four, uh, the three characteristics of existence, you understand the universal laws. From observing your breath and your thoughts, you know that everything is impermanent, constantly changing. Nothing remains the same form, moment to moment. Also, know that you cannot control this change. You cannot hold your breath very long or keep your mind from thinking. This means that everything is non self not you and yours. You cannot control it. Because we see ourselves as enduring entity and are usually trying to hold into something or some state we have achieved, we usually experience this constant change as stress discomfort or suffering. This is the delusion we referred to earlier. On the other hand, know that the pain you may feel in your legs is also impermanent. Just know it and wait for it to pass away. This provides a model for dealing with problems in daily life. Know that they are impermanent, don't worry, and time will take its course. Just rest, relax, and forget about it for a little while. You might meditate to clear up your mind. Then the problem will become easy to solve. It may come to you, oh, that's a way to tackle this problem. This is another technique for preventing stress. This completes our explanations of knowing component. You should continue practicing on your own. Next, we turn to controlling the mind. So this is the technique that everyone wants to learn about it because the big problem when we sit in meditation, the mind wandering somewhere, then we can, cannot control it. So first, set the fat platform at the tip of your nose. For meditation, the mind should be settled in one place. Thus, we set a platform or base location where we concentrate 
the mind. Initially, we set this platform at the tip of the nose. Settle your mind, thereby knowing when you inhale and when you exhale. Hold the mind at the single spot, the tip of the nose. Breathe in, knowing, and breathe out, knowing. Use the continued technique if you find it challenging to keep your mind settled. Count to one each time. Your breath in and out from 50 back to one, and then start from one to 50 again. With these techniques, you can control your mind and stay uh, on the platform at the tip of your nose. Before long, your mind will be settled there. When the mind wanders outside in the past or the future, the proper controlling technique is not to press too hard or to have too firm and intention to control your mind. The mind will not like that. It would be best if you approach your mind with a loving kindness. The kids want to go to the pond to see the fish swimming. If you don't let him go, you will have a tug of war and end up catching each other back and forth because he wants to go. So. You say, all right, honey, you can go to the pond to see the fish, but be careful not to stumble and fall in. And please come back quickly after you have seen the fish. This is how to control and settle the mind using the soft touch without harassment. Both your minds and the minds of others object to being pushed hard or harassed. Always use a soft touch. Be nice and smooth with the mind. It is the most effective way to control the mind. And then number two, have to move the plat uh, platform to the abdomen. Controlling the mind at the tip of the nose is not the ultimate objects of meditation. We move further to the abdomen. To settle your platform at the abdomen, take a deep breath, hold it, and then let it go. See the rising of the abdomen clearly. Inhale with the risings and fallings of the abdomen, and exhale with the falling. Dramatize this by holding your breath a little bit, then you will see the risings and falling very clearly. Next, cut off the feelings of holding your breath. Just concentrate on the risings and falling. Controlling and concentration should work together. You are controlling to focus clearly on the abdomen as the significant objects of meditation. Settle your mind at the abdomen as long as possible. Stay concentrated and mindful. Our practice will concentrate long as longest on the abdomen. Eventually, the end result which occur automatically as the mind settles, will be dryness, lightness, calmness, consentment, happiness, and finally, peace, tranquility, and serenity. All of this occurs simultaneously when you succeed in controlling your mind and settling at the fixed spot for the for the sufficient period. In the beginnings, however, it is very hard. Thus, let your minds wander outside and jump to the past or future 
follow the mind and try to bring it back, you can use the counting technique. The more you can control your mind to remain settled in a single spot, the more valuable and me meaningful your meditation will be. Remain mindful and concentrate on a single point for as long as possible. The ordinary mind is like a glass of muddy water. With meditation, we allow it to settle and avoid stirring up again. Eventually, the water becomes clear and we can see through it from the top to bottom or side to side. Then the mind stops clearly, wisdom occurs. Use this approach to cough with all your problems, whether they uh, involve stress at work or other difficulties. Slow down, breathe deeply, and meditate. When your mind becomes clear, your problem will solve themselves. It is what we call cultivating wisdom from your meditation. Number three, bring the mind back. It is the nature of the mind that is that cannot remain settled very long. The mind is like a cow. When it is free, full of energy, it is very hard to pin down. To control a cow, you use a stake and rope. We put the stake firmly into the ground. Then we tie one end to the rope to the stake and the attach the other and around the necks of the cow. In the beginning, we let the cow run around the stakes until it gets tired. And, um, Eventually, the cow will stop and rest of its own accord. It is the same with the mind. We try to fix the mind on the objects of meditation. Initially, however, the mind wanders outside to past or future. Eventually, it settles down. It is normal for the mind to go out maybe 30 times or 40 times or hundreds of times in one hour. So don't be surprised. It is usually for everyone. Just follow your thoughts and know them. Bring the mind back. Be kind and firm with the mind. Please don't force it too much. Just be friends with your mind and work with it nicely in harmony. In this way, you will enjoy your meditation more than if you are trying to force the mind to work for you. The, con the counting techniques is the easiest way to control the mind and keep it set on the flat form most people use this for the beginning right up to the end. Inhale and exhale and count one, and then continue counting even up to 100. Repeat this again and again. Sometimes we get rid of this counting. So we go back to following the mind, keeping watching, and moving further into step of analyzing our thoughts. Another mental technique is um, replacement or substitution. Replacing one action or objects of meditation with another. For example, suppose you are doing sitting meditation, but the mind say, why do I have to be sitting? I can stand up and walk. So you stand up while keeping your concentration. Then you begin walking meditation. But soon the mind says, 
Why walking? Why not sitting or lying? Then perhaps you return to sitting meditation. It is what we call substitute, substituting or replacing the action or objects of meditation. If you continue changing your meditation this way, your mind will be eventually becomes annoyed. It is better to get back to the major objects of meditation. The risings and fallings of abdomen, much better. Finally, there is a third technique for controlling the mind. When it is a really intransigent, put your tongue against the roof of the mouth and cross your teeth together. This will bring the mind back. All these techniques can help to control the mind, but they require practice. So this is all technique that I would like to share with you today. And I hope that you can enjoy the meditation technique how to control your mind and understand the four great elements. So now, uh, go to the end of the session that um, I would like to uh, share with you. For good health, you need good coordination between your mind and your body. A sound mind and a sound body acting in harmony. Start your meditation with relaxing, knowing, and detoxification. Then continue through analyzing, sensing, feeling, and finally letting go. If you practice properly, you will feel light, content, happy and at peace. Don't be bothered by feeling numbness from your legs falling asleep. Just know that it is occurring. Know that it starts, stay for a while, and then face away. So now we come to the end of the session. Breathe deeply three times. Count each breath, inhaling and exhaling as one. Before you open your eyes, let us express our loving kindness to all beings. Start with yourselves. May I be happy. May I be healthy in my body and mind. May I have success in my work, prosperity, and long life. Whatever you wish for yourselves, which is also for your loved ones, visualize their faces and names. May they be happy. May they be healthy in body and mind. May they have success in their works, prosperity, and long life. Make the same wish for your colleagues at work, May they be happy. May they be healthy in body and mind. May they have success in their life, their works, prosperity, and long life. Lastly, make the same wish for your opponents or enemies. May they be happy. May they be healthy in body and mind. May they have success in their work, prosperity, and long life. Sape sata avera huntun. Sape sata apaya bacha huntu. Sape sata sukita huntu. Sape sata suki atanang pariharantu. May all being be free from enmities. May all being be free from ill treatment. May all beings be free from suffering. 
May all beings protect their all happiness. May all beings be happy in body and mind. Satu, Satu, Satu. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.